it's Renee. Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I actually did film this before, but in it my eye looked super swollen and because it was, because I had really bad allergies. And so I wanted to refilm it just so I could give you guys, at least to me, a little bit more of a quality video where it didn't look like my eye was swollen shut. But if you saw the title, I wanted to try and kind of talk about my experience at Disneyland being a plus size person. I just recently went and I often go a few times a year because we have annual passes. If you'd like to hear about how I go more into depth about the rides, about my experience, stay tuned and we'll get into it. Okay, kind of just to give you a little rundown as to why I think I am qualified to talk about Disneyland. So I have an annual pass, I'm a plus size person, and I go to Disneyland probably two to three times a year, sometimes four, sometimes five. Depends on how wild the year is, hotel deals and all that stuff. Also, if you'd ever like me to make a video about saving money while you're at Disneyland, totally down to help you out with that because it is very expensive to go there. But yeah, so just to give you another little size rundown, depending on kind of where I go, I can run between a size 24 to a 26 in jeans, and then I am a size 3 to 4 in tops. It really just kind of depends on where I shop. I'm kind of, if you're really wanting a good basis, I'm generally in torrid sizing, a size 4 in my tops and a size 26 in my jeans. Obviously it can vary on the shirt or the pants, just letting you know, this is, I'll post a full body picture if you want to know what I look like to see if you have a similar body type to me. I am 5'4", I have pretty short legs for my body, I just do, and I do have a, a VBO, I think it's like a visible belly outline or whatever it's called. I have that, yes. I have semi, they're not bigger, I don't have like a, the biggest chest in the world, but they're not small either, just giving you like kind of a body lay down. I don't think my arms are particularly super broad. And I do have like a smaller space on my stomach that kind of allows me, I guess, almost to fit into the rides at Disneyland. I feel like it kind of does help. So just kind of how my body is proportioned below my chest is a much smaller. So really I do carry most of my weight in like my lower stuff. So like there's boobs and then especially too, I always wear like the type of jeans where that kind of pushes itself inwards or the type of pants that push itself inwards. So I'm just portioned like that that's how my body looks I do think that in regards to that I do ha I am pretty fortunate in the fact that right here is smaller so it makes fitting into things typically a lot easier than for other people where their bodies aren't like that like I said so I'm gonna talk about kind of like my experience at Disney and I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown of every single ride in the park and pretty much how the fit is when I'm there oh so yeah like I said I go quite a few times a year with the fam and I really have never had any trouble with Disneyland. I feel like Disneyland is probably one of the most plus size friendly parks that you're ever going to really go to. It's obviously very expensive, but in comparison to Universal Studios, any of the Six Flags, Great America, Magic Mountain, I feel like Disneyland is going to be the most size accommodating theme park that you are going to go to. Just because they make their seats generally a lot bigger, a lot of their rides have pull down bars, and in general just they provide room for people. Also too, I have never really been there and I've never seen people get kicked off rides. Like I legitimately never have unless they were being like douchebags. I have seen that before, but I've never seen people getting kicked off of a ride for their size. But yeah, basically I think that it is probably one of the most accommodating rides. I feel like that the cast members are pretty nice and they're pretty chill about it. Like they don't really care like if that's like an issue for you. Like you can ask them, they'll tell you, be like, oh yeah, it looks like this, it looks like that. Don't be afraid to go up to cast members for that. Also, I feel like in general, a lot of the cast members, whenever I go there, a lot of them actually are plus size. Like I've seen some girls who, are, they can be taller than me, but they're around the same size as me. And I'll be like, hey, like, how's this or how's this? And like generally they're pretty nice, but don't be afraid to go up and ask people. Don't be afraid to go ask first aid. Don't be afraid to ask city hall. Everyone there is literally being paid to be nice to you. Please be nice to them back. The cast members work very hard. At least I personally truly believe that they do. But they're literally being paid to be nice to you. So, you know, they're pretty much gonna be nice. They're not gonna like really insult you or treat you poorly or anything like that. Like I said, I've never really had anything but good experiences when I've gone, truthfully. So yeah, basically then kind of to go on to rides, like I said, I've never really had any issues with Disneyland as a park, at least for me. I feel like I can walk forever. Disneyland's great for that. Like honestly, it's not like a huge park where like if you need to take a rest, you can. I personally don't really have a huge issue with not being able to like walk around for too long. I'm pretty chill about it. It's not a huge deal unless you're like hauling ass everywhere and everything. 
But yeah, no, like I said, so I'm going to go through every single ride and I'm just, because I have it on a notepad, this way I wouldn't forget about anything. I'm going to go by Disneyland and then by California Adventure, my experience with them, just so you can kind of gauge it for yourself if you've never been before, if you're not sure now and you haven't been in a while. But yeah, I hope that that helps a little bit and makes it easier. So yeah, like I said, if you're wondering too, this is also a kitty notebook. But yeah, like I said, I wrote everything down. It's not really in alphabetical order. It's just kind of by land, and we're going to start off with Adventureland. So Adventureland, the main ride is Indiana Jones Adventure. So kind of how that one is, like there's three rows with four seats in each row. So if you're party four, it actually works out pretty well. But basically, I've noticed that the seats can be a little bit tight, just pretty much like on like my hip area. I've noticed that, but it's really not like that huge of a deal. At least for me, it's not personally. And my dad too, he even has that issue too because he's straight size. My Both my mom and my dad are straight size. My mom doesn't have any issue because she has smaller hips. My dad, he is like taller and he also has had um, hip surgery. And so his hips are kind of just wider now because of that. He is 6'2 and he's like, so he's very tall, has had hip surgery. He's a little bit older. And so hips, his hips just kind of go out more. That's just generally it. And it can be tight for him too. And he has to like kind of spread out his legs more because he's also had knee surgery. And it's just kind of how it fits like that. But whenever I get in, just to make it easier to buckle in, it's like one of those seatbelts where it has the red button on the side and that's how you eject yourself at the end of the ride. So it can be kind of hard to sit down and pull it kind of over because it locks up super easily. Like that's just the thing because it's like an old ass ride. Best thing I've noticed to do is literally just to pull up the seatbelt after you've picked your seat, pull up the seatbelt all the way, buckle it in because it stretches out a ton and then sit down and it'll tighten up on yourself. If you have an issue where you're like, oh, okay, well, how do I know it's going to fit over my certain, like, stomach area? All of Disneyland rides are fairly safe, so you're really not going to have to worry about it. That's probably the most jostled around in a ride you're going to get. And so if you're not really worried about that, like, I'm not at all. I generally put it towards, like, there's a spot, like I said, underneath my boobs right here. And that generally is the smaller part of my stomach, and so I will kind of aim it at that middle point in between upper and lower stomach and I'm like all right this is fine like I'm not gonna get like whiplash most likely most likely can't guarantee but I'm most likely not going to so Jungle Cruise is super easy it's just a sit in you get down in the boat you go sit you go around the jungle the skipper tells jokes and then you get off super easy don't worry about it so next we're gonna go to Frontierland so Frontierland the main rides basically are just Thunder Mountain so Thunder Mountain like there are the boat rides and everything but I think those are closed right now for Star Wars land construction but basically for Thunder Mountain, it is a pull-down bar. So really, you're going to run into pull-down bars a lot in Disneyland. And that's kind of generally how a lot of their rides are. These are actually, like, pretty great. Because, like I said, this ride you can get, like, jostled around in. But it's a pretty chill roller coaster overall because it's kind of smaller. Literally, like, if you are worried about that, like, if you're taller, if you're bigger, like, I generally will go in one cart with just me and my mom. And my mom is straight size. She's smaller than I am. So, I mean... It's one of those things where like she just goes on me with rides and like we both fit side by side together and there's tons of room and I don't ever have to really worry about it. The pull down bar obviously it stops like wherever the highest part of your like you are so generally it stops like I said at my smaller stomach area and it fits fine. It's really easy. It's very chill. My dad like I said he sits in a car by himself because he has to like spread out his legs kind of because like I said he's had like knee surgery and hip surgery. And so his like legs get locked up if he's in like a weird position for too long. But yeah, those rides are very big, very comfortable. They're very easy to sit in. Don't have to worry about it. You'll be fine. So going on to New Orleans, super easy. Pirates is just a sit in ride. Pop in, sit down, you're good to go. Next, you're going to go with Haunted Mansion. That kind of is weird because it's a bar, but it also like pulls down onto you. But it's really just a sit in. If you're worried about it, you could just go by yourself or go with like your young kid. I've seen th three adults fit into it. I've seen like four kids fit into it. I've seen two people. Like it really just kind of depends. And I think you honestly, you'll have like a pretty easy time with it. Just like I said, because it pulls down and then like the front pulls down a little bit. Just so it kind of like locks you in place. It closes in on you. Kind of like that. Next for Critter Country, which is right next to New Orleans Square. Winnie the Pooh ride, super easy. Kids ride, pull down bar. They'll just come over. The pull down bar will lock. You'll push it up a little bit just to make sure that it's locked and then you'll be sent on your merry way. It's very easy. Like I said, a lot of the rides are like that. Now for Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is just a sit-in ride. If you're worried about space, there is a bigger seat in the back that's generally for sitting with other children and I'm pretty sure you can ask whether or not you want to sit back there if you want additional room. But I have seen plus size people go and get in and out of Splash Mountain with like 
no issues. I've gone on Splash Mountain a bunch of times. This was literally no issue because you just sit and then you go and then you're stuck there until the ride's over. Next we'll go on to Toontown. I just found this list from like a travel site and I just like started writing down all the rides to make sure I wouldn't forget any. Toontown there is Gadget's Go Coaster. Gadget's Go Coaster is more of a children's roller coaster so I really don't see many adults sitting comfortably in it. My sister has been on that ride with my nephew and she's 5'9 and she's she's like a size like 12 I'd say like size 12 so I guess technically plus size but she's also very tall but no she is very much like I feel like an Ashley Graham type body like she's like very tall and more like hourglass-y and so yeah she's been on that ride she says mostly it's uncomfortable she said because she's very tall and she says that I think that if you were shorter and you had more of a stomach I could see it kind of being an issue but it's also not that fun of a ride anyway unless you're a child so yeah if you're look if you have kids and you're looking for a small roller coaster to send them on where they don't really need an adult with them send them on that I think they need they don't even need to be like that tall at all one time we just let my two nieces just like go together and they just went together and it was super easy you go around once and then you leave and you're good to go and then there's for Roger Rabbit that one is more of a kids ride as well but it's still a pull down bar and generally you could always just go by yourself if you wanted to you could go with a small child it's just pull down bar it's pretty chill it's pretty easy next we're gonna go on to Fantasyland so I feel like these are probably the most accommodating rides because primarily all of them are pull down bars but they also are kind of somewhat the most like it kind of just depends on what you're into if you're into like the magic of like princesses and storybook rides you'll really like it most of these actually just have pull down parts or they have buckles so going on with Alice in Wonderland Alice in Wonderland is just a pull down bar the front seat which is where the caterpillar head is that is generally the smallest one and the biggest ones are behind you so if you're worried about that I would probably just say sit in the back car part but yeah, because the front part is a lot smaller because it's like the head and so it's pointed inwards kind of like this. Casey Jr. Circus Train, great kids ride. Just sit in. It's like a pretty long like train ride where you just like kind of go around and you look at like down below all the cute little like storybook area from the storybook boat ride. For Dumbo, that's just a buckle seat. So generally how that works is they just started rebuilding Dumbo too to like give it more shade, which is really nice because it's a terrible line and it's always hot. But yeah, it's the kind where the buckle part it has like that additional it's kind of like how old car seat belts used to be for the middle seat where you'd have to pull on it to get more length and then you could buckle it into the other side this is like that except for it has pretty much equidistant seat belt lengths on both sides where the buckle part is and where like the plug into the buckle part is except for the thing that you pick up you can pull out and get more length out of it and put yourself in because generally it's supposed to be for like a child and an adult but you could always just go by yourself if you wanted to if you really wanted to go on it put yourself in there or I've gone with my nieces before like I went with my niece Emily and she's like four foot seven actually no both my nieces are really tall like I've been with Kara before too and she's like five one she's ten and she's like the size of a full-grown adult and it's really annoying but yeah, no, like I said, you'll generally have a pretty easy time going on it. Don't even have to worry about it. Mad Tea Party, I can see this being a little bit snug, but you won't have to worry about not being able to go on it. It's more so the issue of being able to spin it. I can see stomach maybe getting in the way because it does for me sometimes. Just kind of depends on like how I'm sitting. But generally I feel like too, I can usually brace and just kind of go over like this and just start spinning and it's not really an issue anymore. But you can always just sit there, watch your kids spin do whatever and it's pretty easy I honestly get kind of sick spinning sometimes so just do what you're gonna do I feel like most like I said most Disneyland rides are pretty easy and they're pretty accommodating but that's just based off of my own size I cannot account for bigger or smaller that's just I'm talking about my own personal experience and whether or not you may look like me now for Matterhorn Matterhorn is a little bit tricky because they used to be a buckle seat kind of more like Dumbo but then they revamped the ride to make it a little bit safer because because it kind of was sketchy a little bit before yeah, they kind of changed theirs. theirs is more of like the traditional kind of like Indiana Jones where you pull the seatbelt and then you buckle it in I haven't been on that ride in a really long time just because it's always closed whenever I go because they were constantly doing renovations on it and the line is always crazy long. Last time I went on it, me and my sister both kind of noticed is that if you're over my height, both could generally see it being kind of an issue just because it's very like cramped, the seating is, and overall, unless you sit in the very front where there's extra space. But overall, if you're tall, I could see it being a major issue. It's just not that comfortable. I don't really like it. Eh. Also too, Small World, super easy, super great. Sit in, just a boat. It's like it's like pirates and mr. toad's wild ride just another pull down bar it has like a wheel coming up from it because you're supposed to like pretend to drive and then you go to hell or whatever 
but yeah you could easily probably go on that rag by yourself you could probably go on a kid it might be more comfortable by yourself if you're really concerned about it but there is a car outside you can ride in not with like the pull down part but it could give you kind of a general basis of like you're like okay like if a pull down bar is what this has then it's not a big deal I'll be fine same thing pretty much for Pinocchio Snow White and Peter Pan all pull down bars really easy you're not gonna have to worry about that really at all because like I said all they're gonna do is pull it down press it up and make sure that it's locked and then they'll just send you on your way because it's not like a super intense ride they're kids rides basically and yeah another ride too storybook another basically a boat ride you can go and you can sit in and you'll be good to go next we're gonna go on to tomorrowland so for tomorrowland the first ride that you see when you walk in is the astro orbiter that is very actually similar to dumbo it has like the buckle seat rides I never have had an issue with it. I personally just think that the ride is kind of sketchy. So yeah, I don't think you'll have an issue fitting with it. It's just kind of like a cramped space and I don't really think it's that comfortable. But yeah, it's pretty much pretty comparable to Dumbo. Like you pull the seat, buckle up, buckle in, and you fly away. Autopia is super easy. It's just like another case of buckling yourself in just like Dumbo or Astro Orbiter. Astro Blasters, which is just the Buzz Lightyear ride, is the kind where you sit in and then it closes in on you and then you pick up the gun and you start shooting at the targets. Any Nemo is just a sit and ride, no seatbelt or anything. You just sit around and then you take a little tour or the ocean and see stuff from the movie. Space Mountain is another ride that could be kind of iffy. I have never had a problem with it personally, but you go and you sit in and it does have a pull down part, but they're very small pull downs and you're kind of separated between the other person. It's more of like your typical kind of roller coaster. If you've ever been on California Screamin', it's kind of like a little bit smaller version of that, and then you're separated in the middle, and then you have like a small pull-down part that goes on your legs. Like I said, I've never personally had an issue with it. It is kind of tight though, so maybe if you have bigger hips or if you have bigger thighs, there could be an issue. Like I said, I just personally have never had an issue with it. My dad, like I said, who has knee surgery, he does think it's kind of uncomfortable because like I said, he likes to keep his legs more spread out, and so his legs can get kind of sore on that ride because like I said, he's fairly tall and knee surgery issues, so it kind of like squishes his legs inward and so it can be uncomfortable for him it's just not personally really uncomfortable for me and star tours is kind of like your simple just like buckle in you just pull a seat belt in pop it in you pull it out really really far there's lots of room that is all the rides for disneyland i'm gonna go into california now and just give you a rundown of every single ride again thank you for staying with me if you don't mind watching so the first thing to start off with california is hollywood land so Monsters Inc. is just another pull down bar. Guardians is pretty much, I haven't been on Guardians yet. I went on and it's Tower of Terror. I don't really like those rides. They make me kind of sick to my stomach because it's like, you feel like your stomach's gonna lift out of you and it's like bleh. And I really, really don't like that. But it's pretty much the same thing as Tower of Terror. Before I even noticed too, I feel like their seat sizes are kind of comparable to like plane sizes, but maybe a little bit smaller. I can see it being kind of a tight fit, but I've also heard people say that they're very similar to Indiana Jones so I can't give you a full-on be like oh yeah no like it'll be fine because I really don't know so much about that one that's really the only ride I'm not sure on just because I don't ever go on it because it makes me super sick whenever I go on it and then moving on next to Paradise Pier so Ariel is just a pull-down bar just in a big old shell California Screamin so it's actually called I think like the Incredibles coaster now because it's like the whole Pixar fest is happening but you can it's basically just a pull down part kind of like a typical one maybe like Six Flags or like Magic Mountain has those type of roller coasters because it's like the main biggest full-blown coaster at the park and so the only issue I could see is the actual seat part maybe being a little bit uncomfortable if you have bigger hips or you have like a bigger butt is that you kind of get squished a little bit like inwards because they're a little small the actual cars are kind of nice is that the seats themselves kind of sink inwards and so any part that gets squished kind of goes down if that makes sense and so I've never personally had any issues because like I said I can just pull it over myself and away I go also make sure if you've never been on it there is a takeoff part at the beginning where they'll be like five four three two one make sure your head isn't forward because your head will get slammed back into the back of the car and it will hurt very bad I have done it before and so has my mom it does not feel good golden zephyr which is this little circle around flying part Buckle in like Dumbo or Astro Orbiter, you're good to go. It's just, it's slow, but it's very easy. There's also two of the Jumpin' Jellyfish, which is just kind of like Gadget's Go Coaster, where it's a very small ride. It's also kind of boring unless you're a kid. It's just a very small like, buckle you put through a loop and then you buckle it in. Honestly, like I wouldn't even really bother unless you have kids and they probably could go on it themselves. 
and yeah that one I wouldn't even really concern yourself with because it's just like a little kids ride also I forgot to mention too in the other park there's King Arthur and King Triton's Par carousel in California those are easy obviously your kids just go on the thing you can sit next to them there's benches all that Goofy Sky School I'd say would be another tricky one just because the bars that go in front of you are kind of small and kind of confining it is kind of designed more like a kids roller coaster and I've noticed even people too like I said my sister thinks that it's even really kind of weird because she's tall and my mom who's not tall and who is straight size she is only five six and she sits in it and she's like it's really hard to get in and out of these so I generally think yeah it's a little bit trickier to get in and out of it's also just kind of one of those rides where you go on it and it's I feel like it's one of those rides you go on it and if you don't have that strong of a stomach you will get sick instantly because there's like hairpin turns and so they're really tight I've gone on before where I'm like I'm ill I can't go on any ride for a while and so I definitely be wary of that so for the silly symphony swings if you've ever been on like a swing ride at any other park they generally tend to be the most uncomfortable of rides especially if you're plus size so basically what I do so generally on that ride most of the time the double seats aren't taken that's for like if a parent wants to go with their kid but those are very rarely used and are often left closed and so I one time was there and I had a like there was like a plus size employee working there like for a cast member and I was like oh like this one like the single seats you do fit but the little front bar that buckles in it doesn't really fit that well because it's like if you can't get the bar like over your stomach that's kind of a main issue like you won't be able to push it all the way down and then buckle it in and so she was like oh like if it makes it easier for you she's like I've done this before you can go and sit in the double ones and then pull that all the way down and that'll buckle on you and then you can buckle the other one fun wheel you just sit in it's really easy you can fit generally like four to six people in there if you want to go with group easy midway mania is basically the shooting ride it's the toy story ride where you like pull a lap bar down onto yourself and that brings like your shooter forward that one like I said it's just a smaller lap down but there's plenty of space for you to sit sitting pretty straight and then kind of just pulling the lap bar down and then just grabbing onto the thing because it's a little like small circle and then you can just shoot it with the little pole thing that they have next land would be grizzly peak so for the river run they do have seat belts they can be a little bit snug and then the little bar in front I feel like might press on your stomach just in general like on for me it doesn't just because it hits me kind of at like the higher part of my stomach but again it's like one of those rides where you pull out the seatbelt like all the way down buckle it in and then sit and I feel like that's kind of like your best go-to it might not be the most comfortable of rides for you to go on but it is a very like achievable ride if you want to go on it so definitely like I said I would just try it out and if it doesn't work out kind of just how it is but it's not the only ride in the park sword around the world is just like kind of like your standard seatbelt thing like indiana jones so again i would just pull it all the way out buckle it in and then sit down like i said how i do it i just i pull it out as i'm standing i go to sit in i go to buckle it in and then i sit down like they pull out a lot so for the last land cars land so both for luigi and mater theirs are just like the standard buckle in like dumbo or like astro orbiters like we've been talking about and then the last ride for radiator springs racers so that one is more of like your standard kind of buckle in seat belt ride so it's gonna have a seatbelt that comes from like kind of like in your car basically and you're gonna have to like pull it down so if you want the most room so there's kind of two ways you can go about this because there's two different types of seatbelts so the middle seatbelt is kind of more of that pull across seatbelt you could do what I do pull it out put it in but you might be squished and generally we make my mom go in the middle because she's the smallest and so it just works like that or you can go from the side and kind of just pull it all the way out again buckle it in and then sit down you like said pretty much every single ride and Disney is really really accommodating to plus size people and it's not really something you're gonna have to fully worry about at least I don't personally think so just from being a plus size person and going pretty frequently that's literally like all the rides so just a little thing to let you know about suffer from chronic pain one of the things that like my dad does like I said for whole surgery thing and because he has a hard time like it's a little older he said surgeries and so it can be hard for him to kind of like walk around all the time and so he generally has like a walking stick with him and so he has gotten handicap passes before they're really easy to get you just go to City Hall tell them like hey like I'd like to get one of your handicap passes I have a hard time doing this you don't even have to tell them because they don't require um, documentation it's actually illegal to ask you for documentation of your medical condition and so basically what the handicap pass works is that I'll link a, I'll leave a link down below to the full information of it too but basically how it works it's kind of like a fast pass and so you give your tickets to whoever is gonna go get the pass they go to City Hall they're like okay well this is who I am this is 
my medical condition or whatever. Here are the tickets of the people that are in my party. And then the people will tell you, okay, well, there's a bunch of stands everywhere. You go to these people, and then when you want a time for a ride, they'll give you a new one. You can only get one per park. It basically, like I said, acts as a fast pass. And so, say, say you want to go on Thunder Mountain, and it's 6 o'clock. And Thunder Mountain has a wait time of 60 minutes, which is very possible. You go to one of these things, and they'll tell you, okay, well, since the wait is 60 minutes, your return time will be 7 o'clock. So this way, basically, you don't wait in line the whole 60 minutes, and you just return after 7 o'clock. It's like, basically, that you waited the whole time, but in between the 6 and 7 o'clock, you can go and get dinner, you can go wait in another line for something else, and I feel like it's very helpful. It's definitely helped my dad a lot. He deals with back pain and hip pain and everything and all that. Also too, if you're gonna rent a, like a jazzy, like a motorized scooter when you go there, definitely recommend renting it from like one of the local hotels or renting it from the city because you can do that too. Renting the ones from Disneyland are pretty expensive and it gets pricey if you do it every single day. And these ones you can take back and forth to your hotel and it makes walking there a lot easier. Also, if you can afford it, definitely, obviously, if you want, you could stay on property. We don't generally always stay on property because it's usually a lot of us going at one time. And so what we'll do, we'll stay across the street at some of the Best Westerns because it's a really easy walk to and from the park. And it's kind of nice at the end of the night be like, oh, well, there's a hotel. Let's just walk past the buses and go to our hotel. It's really easy. Or if you want to use a private shuttle, obviously there are shuttles for different hotels. The best one, though, I would have to recommend is the Candy Cane because it's its own private hotel you just need a room key from them and then you can use it and they'll take you back and forth I think until like one in the morning and it's really really nice for that there's lots of walk through stuff there's tons of stuff to do so if you find yourself like well maybe I won't fit on these rides there's still tons to do at Disney don't ever feel like you're gonna be excluded like I said it's a pretty plus size friendly park and I think you'll still have a pretty fun time and if you do Hope you do let me know if you do that'd be very fun to hear from you guys but yeah I hope that this video was helpful I hope that it was informative just hearing it from the perspective of a plus size person who goes pretty frequently but yeah like I said if you'd like me to make a money saving video on Disneyland I'm totally down to do that I'm down to help but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video if you did leave a like down below comment and subscribe it'd be great to have you here again my name's Renee thanks for watching bye